caption's all right, Joe. Reed's plain enough. They'll buy them like hotcakes. Better get another pressman. The soldiers are believing. Nah, they won't be leaving for over a week. The army is parceling off the horses and wagons to the soldiers. Anything they can use to work on the farms when they get down home. General Lee gave his orders this morning. Get home. He, what are you doing, Jeff? Retreating and advancing on the enemy. We don't know. Climb up here. You'll never get home on that, Jack. Thanks, Captain. <laughs> Must have been full of corn liquor when you picked him out. I just took what they handed me. After straddling you for four years, I'll sure enjoy a steady seat. Hmm. Somehow I can't get used to the war being over. Well, do you think I'd be going home? Hope I'll never hear another shot fire as long as I live. And you going to Kentucky? I married into a feudal family, but I'm not raising my children to become targets of a lot of bushwhackers. I'm going to move the family west. Just on account of the feuding? If a man can have some respect for his neighbors out there, and all the land you want for the asking, that's where I'm going to build a permanent home for my family. You think you'll ever persuade Granny Spelvin and the old man to leave Kentucky? How hard would you try to be your in-laws? Ah, oh, it'll work out all right when I get home. Granny Spurvin's been pretty good to my three children since my wife died. How old's Lynn getting to be? He's going on ten. Let me pack it, will you, Grampy? Be careful now. My pop will be home from war in about five days, huh? Think you'll know him, Lynn? Sure. <laughs> right fine eye. Easy to hit them when I pretend they're Colby's. Rabbits ain't Colby's. The Colby's fight back. That's what makes them good hunting. Pappy can rest easy in his grave. I got Chet Spelvin for him. Grandpappy! 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 It's yours now, Lynn. Don't ever use it, except in on a Colby.
the matter? Well, how's your grandpappy? Where is he? He's down in Pine Holler. He's laying there. Jed Colby shot him. Colby. Yes. Run down to Weather's base and tell him what's happened. Yes. Your papa will take care of Jed Colby when he gets here. I don't understand you, Mark Hayden. You've been home two weeks, and Jed Colby's traipsing up and down these mountains, bragging how he killed Chet Spilvin. And here you are, backing up, running away from him. The law will take care of Colby. The law. It ain't honorable to take a family feud to court that won't spill no blood for you. I want no blood spilt for me. Then you're putting yourself above the prophets. A knife for a knife and a tooth for a tooth. It's in the book. Your plain duty to take vengeance on Jed Colby. And then his kin is bound to take vengeance on me. And someday one of my sons must kill another Colby. No. I'm going to the law. Of course, Mark, if you insist on preferring charges against Jed Colby, there's nothing I can say. I know it's procedure in some places. It's up to the court to punish a man who commits a murder. That's a matter of opinion. If you want him arrested, I'm bound to arrest him. Jed Colby, you have been found guilty. But on account of the peculiar circumstances and feeling in this community, the court has decided not to have a hanger. But you'll have to go to the state penitentiary for 15 years for the murder of Chet Spellman. Murder? Why, it was feuding, pure and simple. I wish Nin had come out with us. he would be coming out, as soon as your grandma's gone. She's depending on him to do for her, and I couldn't take him away. You and Bill's got to be my family now. Those are mountains, Bill. The Kentucky Hills is like what's on by them, ain't they, Bob? They are, Bill. Jeff. Yep. Fetch me those stakes. Coming right up. Stick her in the ground, son.
You getting out Tuesday, Jed? Yeah. Your daughter's waiting for you. I'll send her in. All right, miss. It's the first time you ever put your arm around me, dear. Did you find out where he's located? I could go there with my eyes shut. Oh, my daughter, Ellen. Oh. I never seen you before. Well, your father and I have been friends for several years. <laughs> we had to be. We've been here together. I got out a few months ahead of him. Going west with us? Yes. Yeah. Here, uh, how much money did you get? Seven hundred dollars. Good. That's enough to get an outfit with. Sure, I'll have everything ready. Get him. We could have taken more than half that herd last night if you hadn't stopped us. Wolves get more of Hayden's cattle than we do. Yeah, we're taking enough. Not to suit me. A few hundred at a time ain't my idea of cattle rustling. We're going to strip Hayden of everything he's got before we get through. But we're going to do it my way. You've had your way for a year. The next time we raid that ranch, we'll run off enough stock to pay for the trouble and keep on going till we've cleaned them out. But we won't be another year doing it. No, you won't. Not until I'm ready. And I'm stretching out his misery the same as he did mine. We're going to keep working on him till he comes gunning for me. Oh, forget it. Let's get something out of this deal. Not yet. When I wipe out the Hedens, I'm going to get them all. For the last. What do you think I've been talking about? There's one of them ain't out here yet. The oldest boy. I'm not waiting for him. I'm gonna have that Hayden Ranch. Oh, don't get your back up. I'm not leaving you out. I'm gonna marry your daughter. Oh! <laughs> there. Finally made up your mind that's the only way you can get her, eh? <laughs> gonna have her. It's gonna take a lot better man than you to tie that gal to eggs. Shoot! 
shooting off their guns. What'd you let her get on that horse for? Oh, how was he going to stop me? Oh, you might have got killed. Now keep off them bronc. Oh, she, she bet Dags a kiss against something or other that, that she could ride the horse. Oh. Pete Gowan. It's no more than a powder burn. Molly, yes, sir. Think you killed him? Yes. It was that fella, Pete Garrett. That's Jed Corby's cousin. Garrett was with Corby the day Grandpa Spelvin was shot. Remember? What did you do it for, Neil? You know, Dad's been doing everything possible to keep from fighting with the Colbys. And there's no use talking like that now. I told your father what happened. He was sure enough upset, but he doesn't blame me. Nobody's gonna shoot bullets into me if I can get them first. Well... That starts the old Kentucky feud boiling again. You keep out of this, Bill Hayden. I don't hanker to be a widow my first year married. It's just fool's luck we're not all turning a hand to bury you. What do you expect us to do? Sit around and let them move everything off the ranch? I've been telling you all along they've been stealing more cattle than you'll ever admit. Colby's been doing everything to get Dad fighting mad. Neil's right. We've got to face it sometime. Neil, come on. Dad's up to something. Where are you going, Dad? To talk to Jed Colby. Not alone. I don't need any help. Bill and I are going with you. This is between the Haydens and the Colbys, Neil. My wife's a Hayden, isn't she? What does it matter if you're a Hayden or a Colby? If a bullet gets you. To drive off every head of stock from his ranch. By daybreak, there won't be a Hayden alive to stop you. from Kentucky. I want to talk to you, Colby. My son-in-law got one of your men for stealing my cattle. You can't accuse us of stealing cattle to cover up the killing of Pete Garon. You've been stealing cattle off my ranch for almost a year, doing all you can to start up that Colby Spelton feud again. I'm not going feuding with you, Colby. 
But I am protecting what belongs to me. Hold it. Put him on the table. Don't hurry, I've got plenty of time. To you. And where'd you drop from? I was just riding through and all of a sudden I heard a splintering and, and that dam tore loose. And you were standing right in the way of it. Dags? The boys sent me up to tell you they're waiting. For, for whatever you got to do. I happened by. Wouldn't have made much difference. I never seen the man I couldn't handle. Better put your hat on before that sun hits you any worse. Thanks, lady. Lady? What are you staring at? A lady? Now you're making fun of me. No, I'm not. Where are you heading, Paul? Grass Valley. How much further is it? About seven hours with all them pack animals. You can't make it before dark sets in. You'll have to camp down in the meadows for the night. Thanks. I will. Uh, glad you asked by, stranger. You're welcome. What you thinking on, Ellen? Just wondering how ladies dress. Eli, what did your mother look like? Oh, she she was beautiful. I remember one dress she had that had spangles all over it and, and feathers around the neck. She used to always carry a red pocketbook when she went out walking. Do ladies wear their fine dresses all day? Oh, no. Well, only in the evening when the gentlemen come to court. And what do they do? Just sit around, talking, and drinking, and laughing. Having lots of fun in the big parlor. Did you live there? 
with me. Oh, no. We had a room just around the corner. But my, my mother used to always see her friends in the big house. They wouldn't let me in the parlor. I was too young. But I used to peek through the curtain. My, some of them ladies were lookers. I'd still be there if that sailor hadn't shot my mother. I wonder where we could get some shoes and stockings. Maybe a dress. And one of them feathered neck things. Well, maybe, maybe you can get them down at the store in Grass Valley. Oh, no. Besides, I want them for tonight. Oh. Guess I'll have to go walking, just as I am. I saw your fire. Glad you did. I'll be through in a minute. Do you shave every day? Every other day. What for? Just a habit, I guess. Why? I'd have thought you was kind of soft if I didn't see the strength in your arms. <laughs> Have a cup of coffee? You're being polite and making fun of me. I ain't used to being polite at. I can get my own coffee without being waited on by men folks. Must be sort of hard going barefoot through these mountains. It's none of your business that I ain't got shoes and stockings. I didn't mean anything that way. They write poems about barefoot girls like you. What's a poem? Oh, a lot of words put together. They don't mean anything, but they sound pretty good. Want to hear one? No. I guess I wouldn't care for it. I could sing you a song. I know. A story about the Indians. If you're going to keep on making fun of me, I'm going. No. Don't. Now, will you let me get you a cup of coffee? You're a disturbing sort of girl. It's getting late. Don't go yet. Oh, I wasn't going back tonight. If I won't be any bother to you. But remember, you gotta treat me like a fellow. Never knew bacon could taste so good. Funny, ain't it? Only yesterday there wasn't any you. 
We ain't said much to each other. Ain't said anything, really. Only already yesterday seems way back there. Hey, let's get acquainted. All right. I'm Ellen Colby, and I hail from the mountains of Kentucky. Colby. What's the matter? Why do you look at me like that? I am from the mountains of Kentucky. I am Lynn Hayden. Ellen. Listen, Ellen. It is now fight. We didn't start it. Why should we hate each other? My father went to jail. Fifteen years he was there. Hayden sent him. Uh, Hayden went square into the law. But I didn't, then. Don't touch me! I don't want to see you or any, Hayden. Except in a dead one. Get out before I... sons and these two sons were brothers. Bo Hunkus was the name of one Josephus was. You gotta give me a kiss first. Now these two sons <laughs> had suits of clothes. They were made for I did Sunday. have one for you, Ted, but it looks Bo like it's gone. Bo Hunkus wore his everyday Josephus. There you are. Money. It's beautiful. Now these it's two real sons real. are dead and gone long way. They're actually I thought they were lost years ago. Where did you find them, Lynn? Up in the attic after Granny Spelvin died. I remember seeing you have them when I was a kid. My father gave them to me when I left the old country and came to America. I was 15 years old then. And now I have grandchildren. Uncle Bill. Oh. Can she talk? She ain't old enough yet. Did you bring you a present too? Sure did. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? Is he your uncle then too? No. He's my brother. Just like Daddy there is your brother. You kick me again and you'll get hurt. Uncle Lynn told me I could kick anything I wanted with him. And it wouldn't hurt him. Hey, Lynn, you better take these boots away from your nephew before he gets you. Right there. Must have taken every dollar you had to buy all these presents, Lynn. I figured I might land a job when I got here. There's one been waiting for you a long time. Hope you're planning to settle down to it and get married. Lots of fine girls raised on the ranches out here. I think I've got one all picked out, Dad. What do you think of my big brother, Molly? This is very nice, Lynn. And I thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you're back in the family, Lynn. Uncle Lynn, who is this for? Now, you leave things alone that don't belong to you. Who is it for? Never mind. Ann, how long have the Colby's been out here? Why, about a year. How'd you know? I uh, ran across Ellen Colby. She's white trash. Runs around with anyone that'll go with her. How do you know? She's some wild. She's young yet. Colby bothering Dad? Stealing cattle, that's all. Well, last year, Dad... No. Well, might as well know it sometime. Things are heading for a showdown. Dad still trying to sidestep a feud? Yes, if he can. But Neil and I don't feel that way about it.
Too far. Can't reach him with this gun. Let's go after him. That ought to stir him up enough to suit Colby. Hagel will think I shot to kill that kid. <laughs> Dad, you can't hold back on the Colbys this way. And you might as well know it now. The rest of the family can't understand it either. We are not going to feud to oblige Colby. They just shot at your own grandchild, didn't they? How are you going to answer that? When the time comes, I'll deal with Colby as a cattle thief. They didn't mean to hit Mary. Colby had that shot fired so we'd all fall into a trap. And he could wipe us out in self-defense. I'll settle this my way. What do you think of them, Lynn? Great. Well? Well, what? Take your pick. That's what I brought them in for. You're not the only Santa Claus around this ranch. <laughs> that white one over there. Just as I thought. White Cloud! What'd you call him? White Cloud. That's what he looks like, running against the side of a hill. I... I certainly appreciate him, Bill. You know, if it wasn't so near supper time, White Cloud and I would take a look at Dad's ranch. You better save that until morning, Lynn. It's an all-day ride. Oh. Just looking around. Be gone all day, won't you? Tell him Kobe's all right. It ain't her fault she's got a killing father. How'd you know I was going there? I saw yesterday you was lonely for her. I can't forget her, Molly. You shouldn't. It's more important than anything the Haydens or the Kobe's could be fighting about. You. you won't be telling on me, will you? No. The last I saw of you, you was riding out that way.
<laughs> uh, Where are you laughing at? It struck me funny, Ma Caden, chasing you out of Grass Valley. Well, well, I didn't see you laughing last night when they chased you off his ranch. Uh, we're going back tonight. Well, I figured something like that. Well, I'll handle it myself this time. Just before daybreak, they stole all your horses, Bill, and took all the cattle out of the south pasture. Get him up to the house. Don't say anything to Dad. I'm going up in the Colby's neighborhood and try to locate that stock. You have every hand on the ranch ready when I come back. No matter what anybody says, we're all going after what belongs to us. He didn't say anything to Colby about us planting gunpowder up here. He doesn't want to handle the Haydens my way, huh? We'll drive out the rest of their stock tonight. That'll get every man of them coming after us up through this canyon. One little match. Wham! <laughs> ah, I hope Colby ain't in the canyon at the same time. Hey, do you want to see something interesting? Come here. Take care of a white cloud.
remember leaving you. When you tell me that Lynn Hayden shot Fred. And that he gave you and Joe the beating of your lives. But I'm not allowing you to say that Ellen's been making up to him. You get her this? That your handwriting? Have every man settled up and meet me at the corrals. Well, get going. Have you been accepting favors from Lynn Hayden? I'm going to marry Lynn Hayden in that dress. You better get your hatchet. Drive him out of there. I'm ramming home ahead of the rest. Where's Bill? I don't know. Gang riding in. 
Bill's outside, on his horse, dead. Well, you want me to bring him in while you run and tell the sheriff? Because it wouldn't be fair to accuse the Colby's that's in your new for certain. Maybe you want to look, make sure. All right, go ahead. That's Bill. The same face. The same hand. The same eyes that have been looking at you ever since they first opened only. Only they're closed now. And they're never going to open anymore. Never! Molly, stop it. Calm yourself. Oh, I'm calm. I'm just telling you to do your duty. It's your move, ain't it? The Colby's kill the Hayden and the Hayden's tell the law. Ain't that the game? Ain't that the rules we've been living up to? Only you better hurry. Better send quick for help. Because maybe they'll start shooting the children. And the children ain't old enough. They, they wouldn't know enough to run. Well, are you still going to wait till we're all dead? Then go to the law like you did when he killed old man Spelvin? Are you still going to settle in your own way? This is your family. That's your son. the rest of his outfit will be long here any minute. We'd better be moving. Yeah, we'll wait for him at the end of the road. Ah, uh, they'll follow us. Come on, fellas, let's go.
up, get up. Hurry. Lynn, you've got to get out of here. Lynn, come on. Dad with you? You'll have to depend on me from now on, Ellen. Your father and the rest of them got caught in a landslide up in the canyon. Lynn Hayden, too. You sure Lynn Hayden was killed? Yes. I don't believe you. Just you and me left. We're getting married. You ain't serious about that. Sure, sure. What'd you think? I didn't know you thought of me that way. I've changed some lately. Well, if you're proposing, do I have to give my answer right away? Why not? We'll get along. We'll be the biggest ranchers in this state. What do you say? <laughs> 